Welcome back to Tight Lining Maryland. Today we are at the Vice trying to do a little bit of a video tutorial for a jig streamer. With that said, this has been a fly that's been really productive for me over the last year. Um, I've mentioned it in previous videos, but some of the ins inspiration, I guess, for this fly has come from people like um, Old Dominion Trout Bum, uh, Justin from uh, Hot Spot Nymphing, but it's just a super simple fly that um, ultimately gets you to depth, provides you the opportunity to give fish just a little bit bigger profile meal, and I think entices them to eat in some of the tougher times where maybe they're just not taking nymphs or dries, and it gives you you, uh, the versatility of a Euro Nymph while also just a little bit bigger profile of a streamer. So with that said, I like to tie it in two different variations. I already kind of showed you just earlier that I like to tie it in um, an olive green, but in this video um, I'll also have some of the, the materials out as you'll see kind of like right now I should have an image for you that you can take a look at. I like to tie it in black too. I think that both of those colors present you opportunity to catch fish. Olive usually imitates what um, most stream bottoms look like, but sometimes maybe you need a little bit of a contrast contrast or something that um, just has a little bit darker profile and I think when the water is up a little bit or possibly even staying that black is going to give you the color that probably you need. I think now would be a great time to show you just how easy this fly is to tie and hopefully you can add it to your box the next time you hit the vise or possibly even buy some uh, streamers yourself. So let's get right into it. The first material you're going to want is a jig hook and a size 8. After that, you'll want a 3.8 millimeter tungsten bead in silver. Next, you'll want 70 denier olive thread. After that, you'll want 0.15 lead free wire. The second to last thing you'll want is an olive strung marabou. And finally, the last thing you're going to want is a UV polar chenille in olive. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on just a little bit of our 0.15 lead wire. We're gonna give it about eight wraps. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We'll put it right up against the bead. That way we kind of jam it in there. So we'll start to peel that off a little bit. We'll helicopter this part off. All right. So we're in there nice and tight. It's gonna keep that bead in place. It's gonna give us an extra little bit of weight. So feel pretty good about that. Let's start to put on our thread. Um, nice and simple, we've just got on our 70 denier um, olive thread here. So we're gonna get this thing started. Let's start to wrap back. The nice part about this fly in general is that it is very forgiving if you for some reason are not the perfect tire or just like aren't super precise. So don't sweat it if things are not perfect. You're gonna basically be able to make this fly do exactly what you want, catch fish the way you want, and um, you know, have some success. It does not, again, have to be perfect. So I think when you get into dry fly fishing and you get into certain types of nymphs, um, things do have to be precise. So at this point, we've got on our, you know, thread. We've got on a little bit of extra weight there. Now what we can do is we can tie in our, uh, our marabou tail. So nice and bushy, you know, something that's going to really wiggle there in the water. So let's get this thing tied in and we'll do a simple little pinch wrap to get this thing on there so we got tail coming out the back usually you want you know I'd say about maybe the size of the hook would be fair so let's put that and pinch it a little less all right there we go we'll pinch it right onto the back so we got a nice little grip there on it we'll go once over the top cinch it down go another one cinch it down and then just a couple extra for good measure to really make sure it's on there tight. Then what we can do is we can cut this off. And at this point, now what we can do is we can just tie back in the fibers just a little bit more off of that tail. And then basically we're gonna, you know, flatten out just a little bit of marabou that we have coming up the hook shank, but that's that's not a problem. Again, super forgiving fly and something that, um, you know, by the time that we put on this, you know, chenille, I'm not, I'm not worried about what this fly is gonna look like here in the back if it's not perfect, like how we have that little bump right there. 
All right, so now what we can do is we've got a piece of, and I, I've got a size too big, honestly. We've got on this polar chenille. Um, you should get it in a size small. I have it in um, basically the, the regular size, and I would advocate that you uh, are gonna want the small, but I'll show you something about even when you purchase the wrong thing, you know, you can still make some adjustments. So we're gonna do our pinch wrap yet again. So we got one, two, and we're tying this in all the way back to where the fibers of that marabou are gonna meet this piece of polar chenille. And we'll, we'll cut off this little bit, not that again, it would be a huge problem if it didn't, but we'll do it anyway. All right, so let's get this thing tied back in. Yep, and we'll bring it forward. Okay, let's give ourselves a little bit more. Now we're gonna put our thread just right at the base, right there. And now what we can do is we're gonna start to basically take this polar chenille and wrap it forward. And I think that given the marabou and its positioning, you can go really light, um, just kind of touching each, uh, you know, wrap right next to each other. And then as you get to the part where the marabou, like we're about to right now, now I'd say you wanna keep it much more compact, maybe even almost like double up um, and it's gonna give that fly just a little bit more body right by the head. So I'm trying to give a few more wraps to get kind of that, that taper the right way, hopefully, and just build it up. And I think we've, we've gotten that effect. So what I do is once I've gotten to the bead and we're you know flush up against that, I wanna take some of these fibers and peel them back just to make sure that they're you know on that fly and going backwards for us so I don't lose them here when I cut them in a second. So I like to do two behind and then two in front and I think that's pretty much a standard practice for most people. So we've got our fibers peeled back. Now that we've got it secured, what we can do is we can cut off right there. And I don't do like a firm cut. I just kind of take the, the scissors right to it to the point that it kind of almost just, you know, nips it for me. And uh, now what we can do is again, peel these fibers back, take some more touching wraps to the front. And you'll notice, this is what I meant by you'll want the, um, the smaller fibers. It's a little bit too bushy right up across the top. So what I like to do is I like to give it a haircut. Uh, but before we do that, I think now would be the time that we can kind of um, basically make sure that we get our whip finish in there real quick. So let's get this done and finish off this fly. So we got our first, I like to do two, basically three or four wraps of each. One, two, three, four. All right, so we got our double whip finish and now we can just take our scissors right to the base and pop that thing off. All right, so now's the point where again, we're gonna give this thing a haircut. It's just a little too tall for me. Make sure you get the ones in the back. I want to make sure that marabou though is coming out the coming out the tail there. So we're not touching that. Now we'll take our rotary function, kind of turn it upside down, make sure that everything is even along the back side too. We want the belly not too thick there. All right. So at this point, I think you have seen the simplicity of this uh, this wonderful jig streamer. Um, it is not super flashy. It is not anything that's super crazy. You realistically only have two real fly materials, and then the rest is just the bead, the hook, and um, you know your lead wire. But this little thing right here, when you get that tail wet and it starts to bounce along the bottom, and you just you know you're jigging it, pulsing it, putting it by structure, and just getting it down there on those days where those fish are just a little bit more sluggish, I think it's going to give you exactly what you need. So there's a little jig streamer to add to your Euro repertoire the next time you hit the stream and hopefully it treats you well so tight lines and see you next time
All right, everybody, that's going to wrap it up for Tightlining Maryland. Um, you know, if you have any other suggestions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to hear like what other flies you maybe think that you would like to see tied. Um, I know there's all types of varieties out there for you where you can find pretty much anything you need. Uh, but if there's something specific I can do uh, that maybe you've seen me fish or you think that I fish, I'd be happy to give that a shot here as we hit the winter because it's a little bit harder to get to the water these days. But I really appreciate you tuning back in. Thank you so very much for all the support with this channel. Um, I love to see where this thing keeps going but for right now um, I just appreciate everything you all have done to help me grow so tight lines and thanks for watching